Nazanin Boniadi is an Iranian-born Screen Actors Guild and ACTA Award-nominated actress and renowned human rights activist. Her TV and film credits include How I Met Your Mother, Homeland, Counterpart, and Hotel Mumbai. She will be starring in Amazon's upcoming Lord of the Rings series. Nazanin is an Amnesty International ambassador, has partnered with the U.S. arm of that organization since 2008 to campaign for the rights of disenfranchised populations across the world with a focus on the unjust conviction and treatment of Iranian youth, women, and prisoners of conscience. She's been published in the Washington Post, CNN, the New York Times. Her advocacy has taken her to the German Bundestag, the British Parliament, and the U.S. Capitol. The Program for Torture Victims awarded Nazanin their 2014 City of Second Chances Award in 2018. She was selected by People magazine as one of their 25 women changing the world. In 2020, she received the Freedom House Raising Awareness Award, and she was selected for membership by the Council on Foreign Relations. She's a recipient of the 2022 Ellis Island Medal of Honor. Nazanin, uh, please take the floor. It's an honor to have you with us. The honor is mine. Thank you, Halal. Deputy Permanent uh, Representative Moeni, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to address the United Nations opening of the 14th Annual Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy. This is an important opportunity to place some of the most pressing human rights situations on the international agenda and to support courageous dissidents and political prisoners around the globe. I want to thank the 25 human rights NGOs that co-sponsor the Geneva Summit for inviting me to speak today on the situation of human rights in Iran, my homeland. I also wish to thank the Permanent Mission of Canada for co-hosting this event. Those of us advocate, advocating for human rights in Iran appreciate Canada's support. Canada has been a lead sponsor of a UN General Assembly resolution for the protection and promotion of human rights in Iran since 2003 when dual Iranian Canadian citizen and freelance photojournalist Zahra Kazemi was killed while in custody and her medical examiner later testified that she had sustained brutal torture and rape. The support and promotion of such resolutions is the very least the people of Iran expect from the free world. In that regard, we welcome the vote which just took place here on Friday upstairs at the Human Rights Council to renew the mandate of the Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Iran. Many of the delegates here represent countries that co-sponsored this resolution, and I thank you for that. Because one thing is clear, the people of Iran are being denied their basic human rights. Since the 1979 revolution, the denial of fair trials and due process have been symptoms of the Iranian authorities' disdain for the rule of law and those defending it, as well as tools for the monopolization of power and their persecution of those who challenge it. So sadly, it came as no surprise when security forces yet again unlawfully used lethal force and birdshot to crush mass protests over water shortages in Khuzestan and Loristan provinces last year, killing at least 11 people and injuring scores more. You may recall that according to Reuters, this number was more than 1,500 in the 2019 protests. Nor should we be surprised that Iran is suffering from an epidemic of torture. Amnesty International has documented that Iranian authorities have failed to provide accountability for at least 72 deaths in custody since January 2010, despite credible reports that they resulted from torture, ill treatment, or the lethal use of firearms and tear gas by officials. Leaked surveillance footage from Tehran's notorious Evin prison in August 2021 showed prison guards beating, sexually harassing, and otherwise torturing prisoners. In the last year, several thousand men, women, and children, including human rights defenders, protesters, bereaved relatives demanding accountability, lawyers, journalists, environmentalists, dissidents, artists, writers, teachers, dual and foreign nationals, have been interrogated and unfairly detained simply for exercising their rights to freedom of expression, association, and assembly. Hundreds remain wrongfully detained by the end of the year. Hundreds of women human rights defenders remain unjustly imprisoned in Iran, including lengthy sentences for at least six women who peacefully campaigned against compulsory veiling. 
In a brave act of civil disobedience, renowned rights defender Nargis Mohammadi, who has spent the better part of the last 13 years behind bars for her peaceful advocacy, is resisting a prison summons she received on March 8th. Her latest charges are due to her documentary film, Opposing Solitary Confinement, her solidarity with Afghan women being oppressed by the Taliban, and her nomination for a Nobel Peace Prize. She is calling on the international community to give voice to and to platform Iran's civil society leaders. Speaking about women's rights, we cannot understand how the Islamic Republic of Iran was elected to the UN Commission on the Status of Women. If we agree that it's a farce for Russia to sit on the Human Rights Council, how can a regime that subjugates women be elected to the UN body for gender equality and the empowerment of women? And it's not just women. The authorities have banned independent political parties, trade unions, and civil society organizations, censored media, and jammed satellite television channels. In January, the authorities added the messaging application signal to the list of blocked social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. They've also imposed internet shutdowns during protests, hiding the scale of violations by security forces and preventing people from organizing. The authorities continue to conceal the truth surrounding the January 2020 shooting down of the flight PS752 by the Revolutionary Guards, which killed 176 people. The bereaved relatives of the victims seeking justice in Iran continue to face intimidation, harassment, arbitrary detention, torture, or other ill treatment. And it's imperative that the countries of the victims, including Canada, Ukraine, the UK, Sweden and Afghanistan continue to collectively pursue full transparency, accountability and justice. After a 43 year case study on the Islamic Republic and the rise to the presidency of Ebrahim Raisi, who has been a pillar of the oppressive state implicated in crimes against humanity and whose leadership harkens back to 1980s Iran, it's become abundantly clear that a culture of impunity reigns supreme in the country and the system is impervious to reform. As the logic goes, there's nothing wrong with democracies that can't be fixed with what's right with democracies. Unfortunately, the opposite is true for countries like Iran. The very pillars of the system ensure that its wrongs cannot be made right. We should remember that there is no avenue for justice through domestic channels in Iran, and Iranian victims of serious crimes committed by the Iranian authorities look to the international community to take meaningful action to ensure their rights. This is why Amnesty International and other NGOs have been urging members of the U and member states of the UN Human Rights Council to support the creation of an impartial mechanism to collect analyze, consolidate, and preserve evidence of the most serious crimes committed in Iran to facilitate future fair and independent criminal proceedings. For far too long, we have soft peddled human rights advocacy and our foreign policy, but human rights are intricately bound with respect for the rule of law, and there can be no good governance in the long run without the rule of law. Good and law abiding governance not only makes for better regional neighbors, but members of the international community. So it's not just a moral imperative that we prioritize human rights in our foreign policy. It's to our advantage that we don't allow it to overshadow our geopolitical, economic, and other concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Nazanin.